To this exercise, we are going to geolocate our model and practice using some of the sandbox tools. Let's start a new drawing. Delete the lady. Go to File, Geolocation, Add Location. I'm going to input Campus Drive Oakland CA, click on Search, and use the scroll button to zoom out to a larger area, and click and drag to pan the view. So this is the campus area. Scroll up to zoom in. Here, this is this group of building is our landscape horticulture department. I cannot zoom in anymore. 18 is the highest level for free map. Click on select region, select provider. You got two options. The first one, digital globe, is free map, and the near map has a higher resolution map, but you need to pay for it. So for our practice, I'm going to use the free one. Click and drag the grip, the white dot, to resize your uh, snapshot window and click and drag the map to recenter the area. So I'm going to choose this slope and this department campus. Click on Import. So you will see in the tags and outliner, when I added geolocation information, two groups were created. First one, which is the visible one, is the location snapshot, is a 2D image. If I go to File, Geolocation Show Terrain, now is a 3D terrain surface showing up. Both groups has a little lock icon. So which means if I click on the group, the boundary box is showing red color, which means it's locked. You cannot edit. If I double click, I cannot edit. So this is different from the blue color we usually see. OK, so that's how we add a geolocation to this model. Now I want to create a new terrain so I can edit and add a platform to sit our models on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click and then click on uncheck. Go to edit, copy, and immediately go to edit, paste in place, paste in place. So you see I got two location terrains. This is a duplex from the original one. So open the entity info you will see it's still on the location terrain. I'm going to change its tag to untagged. So now I can right click to lock the original one and uncheck the location terrain to close it. So now I have this only edible terrain surface. I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to call it new terrain. 
So now, if I double click, because I duplicate this one from the original one, so SketchUp asked me to make sure this either um, this instance is still connected to the original one. So no, I'm going to make this one a unique one so I can edit it, but still keep the original location terrain as is. So I'm going to click on make unique. So now I want to use the sandbox tools to edit this terrain. So in the large tool bar, right click to turn on the view, views. So this is actually the same with the view toolbars. So you can scroll down to turn on the views. An easier way is right click in the toolbars area, like a blank area. And then I'm going to turn on sandbox as well. So these are the sandbox tools. So this is the views tools. So this is very convenient because I can go to a ISO view or a top view. So now I'm going to um, actually I'm going to turn on the snapshot and right click the group to unlock it. You can either unlock in the drawing window or in the outliner. So I'm going to unlock it. Now I'm going to move it up. Press the up arrow key to lock it. Maybe uh, 300 feet. Enter. So you see I got a floating snapshot on top of the edible terrain. So I'm going to go to the top view. Click on camera to uncheck the perspective. So now it's like a flat uh, top view. I can draw the location of my new plaza on top of this aerial map. So I'm going to draw a rectangular shape, uh, 40 feet, comma, 90 feet. Enter. So this is actually the area of my park, little park. So I'm going to move it to the location I want to locate it. See here is a slope and uh, open area without too many existing trees. So I'm going to locate my plaza right here. And then I'm going to use the rotate tool to rotate it to fit into this area. So I'm going to yeah, move it a little bit. Just adjust. You can just do any design you want. Um, so now if I go back to the ISO view and I'm going to select this surface only. There's a little bit Z, Z fighting is okay. So I'm going to select the surface, the rectangular surface, and then click on this stamp tool in the sandbox toolbar right here with a little house. I'm going to input um, 10 feet. Pay attention to the measurement box at the right lower corner, offset. So this is going to be the distance offset 
from the footprint of this rectangular shape. So I'm going to input 10 feet. Now I can click on this new terrain. You see, I got a platform. If I move my mouse up and down, it became like a sunken platform or raised one. So I just adjust my mouse until I'm satisfied with the area. So I'm going to do it like a half cut, half fill. So sit right here. So it sit nicely in the slope. Notice there are some like a little lines at the corner. So use the select tool to double click to uh, edit this new terrain. So there, are, you can use the eraser and uh, if you erase this line, this face will disappear. So I'm not going to do that. Hold down the shift key and then click on it, which means I'm going, I make all these edges hidden. So I'm going to click, click, click. Or you can click and cross here and click, click. So, okay. So now actually I'm going to pick a material, maybe a dark one, to apply to this surface to make it a little bit visible. So you see this, these edges are still there. It's just you just pay attention not to apply to the whole area, but just this new surface. Here we go. So now maybe like a new material to the platform to make it visible. So now you see I got a new platform sitting in the slope. So if I go back to the top view, okay, to zoom, I'm going to draw a path leading from the foothill to the platform. I'm going to use the two-point uh, two arc. There is a path right here. So basically, I'm going to just design a path. You can see I'm kind of like a not touching the existing trees. Here we go. Select to select all three arcs. Right click, weld, offset uh, 12 feet. Use the line tool to make it a closed Now go back to ISO to select the surface and use the drip tool to click on this. Yeah, it looks better. So double click to enter the editing mode. Um, use the paint bucket to give it a material. So I'm going to use the eraser, hold down shift to erase these lines. So it's feeding into this area. All right. So now
This site is ready to import my park model into it. So I'm going to go to File, Import, Find the Park. It depends on how complex your model is. It takes a second to import. So I'm going to click right here and use the rotation tool. You can press the up arrow key to lock it to the ground and then click at this corner and then the one point and one point here. Oh, you see the Z fighting? So I'm going to move it. Use the up arrow key to move it up only one inch enter now it looks good okay so probably double click double click i'm going to delete this area Okay, so now this is the end of the exercise. So if I turn off the snapshot, so I got a terrain. You can delete this footprint of the path in the building. So this is the existing terrain. I make a copy and then edit it to have a platform in the middle of the hill. And then I draw, drip a path leading from the bottom of the hill to it. Finally, I import my little park to locate it onto this terrain. That's it for today's exercise. Don't forget to save your model. So I'm going to call it Park Terrain.